because young people are the present leader and the future leaders. If young people were not part of the dialogue from now, mm -hmm. first, it won't be part of their culture in the future, which we will mess and we will reinvent the situation that we are living now. Also, <coughs> because um, like young people around the world are now, the, 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 especially, let's say, in the WANA and the WANA region, they are the highest population. So if the highest number of people were not involved in peacemaking, their needs were not involved, uh, their voice was not, uh, they were not uh, involved, then basically these peacemaking policies or dialogues just neglect a huge uh, amount of people or population or a part of generation. It's very important because uh, in the MENA region, young people make up 60% of the overall population, but have very, very little say in the real levers of power. Uh, they've been systemically denied a seat at the table. They even, even at the table of political power, they're denied uh, the, the ability to express themselves in any kind of format through civil society or civic action. I think it is important because uh, young people, they are part of the solutions. They are part of uh, what we are talking about when uh, uh, old people try to solve or when they try to tackle uh, any issue, they don't involve young people, but we have to involve them because we need their ideas and they are strong enough to make a difference. They are strong enough to make peace and they believe that that's because they had a, uh, my own experience and they believed when I was in the refugee camps. Uh, I can make a change no matter how old I am. For example, I was just 14 years old when I started campaigning, when I thought my voice could make a difference and that happened. I had my voice and my voice is the only thing which helped me to make peace, to uh, give equal opportunities to children.